And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes her, and this is the story of the daughter of Shu'aib alayhi salam. That she comes to Musa alayhi salam, we know nothing about her in terms of her characteristics. We know what she says. We know what they went through when they tried to water uh, their, their flock. But there's only one characteristic that we know about her. What was it? Tamshi ala stihya. She came walking to Musa alayhi salam with modesty. Haya. Now, haya is a lot more than just modesty. In more than 100 ayats of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references Prophet Musa alayhi salam with so many experiences that he had with his long and extensive journey. And throughout that journey, there were a few individuals who are unnamed. Amongst them is the famous story in which after Musa alayhi salam goes through what he went through and tries to escape from uh, Egypt towards Median, the city of Median, on his way to this region, he stops at a place and he notices a group of people, shepherds, basically watering their flock. And then he notices two women and they have their flock, but they are not able to uh, basically take care of them or nourish them. So what does he do? This is the famous story. Musa alayhi salam goes to help these two women, the daughters of Shu'aib alayhi salam. And he's very strong, Musa alayhi salam. So he takes care of this massive rock that was blocking part of the spring. And Musa alayhi salam is able to then water the flock. Then he goes and retreats uh, to the shade. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, lahuma thumma tawalla ila He goes towards the shade. Imagine standing, sitting under the shade. And he makes this dua that is so famous that so many people today know. What did he say? So he said, My Lord, I am in need of whatever good you are going to bestow upon me. Musa السلام, made this dua. Now this dua today, some people refer to as the dua of marriage, right? They'll make this dua to get married. Uh, some people realize that this dua is for a job. Of course, the dua is for everything. Musa السلام, took care of this situation while he himself was in difficulty. When he left Egypt, it was said that he traveled during the nights. One of the scholars said, is reported by Ibn Kathir, that he traveled only at night so that he would not be seen. And he traveled for eight days and he had nothing with him. And he was so hungry, he was starving, and his basically his, his stomach was into his body, meaning he was really, really hungry. He would literally eat some of the leaves that he would find. Musa السلام, should be exhausted looking after himself, but he sees these two women and he decides to help for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he makes this dua. فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ What happens? He makes this dua, and eventually one of the two sisters comes to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes her. And this is the story of the daughter of Shu'aib alayhi salam. That she comes to Musa alayhi salam. We know nothing about her in terms of her characteristics. We know what she says. We know what they went through when they tried to water uh, their, their flock. But there's only one characteristic that we know about her. What was it? Tamshi ala stihya. She came walking to Musa alayhi salam with modesty. Haya. Now haya is a lot more than just modesty. And one of my teachers actually would recite this tamshi ala stihya. He would explain it and then he would continue. Ala stihya in qalat. And then he would say upon modesty, continuing. As well, she said, my father would like to reward you for helping us. So in other words, my father wants to thank you and appreciate what you did for us. Right? He was not able to himself. The father is old. Wa abuna shaykhun kabir. He's an older man. So these two daughters of Shu'aib, uh, salam, basically got their help from Musa salam, and then he came uh, and then he sent his daughter to call Musa salam, that we want to reward you for that. Musa salam, goes to the house of Shu'aib and he tells him what he went through. And he tells him, don't worry, don't worry. You've been saved from the wrongdoing people. You're in a better place here. And one of the daughters then says, one of the scholars says, it's the older daughter. One of the daughters of Shu'aib salam, then says, Basically, my father, why don't you hire him? Because the best of people you can hire, al qawiyul Amin, is the one who is strong and the one who is trustworthy. So we have two characteristics of Musa salam that we know of. And one characteristic of the daughters of Shaib that were told to us, only one, and that it was haya, modesty. Musa salam, why was he to be hired? What's going on? He's to be hired because he basically helped them in a, in a time of need. And also he was very strong. He was trustworthy in that he was righteous. He was very pious. Shu'aib could tell that Musa was a trustworthy person. Also, he didn't say or do anything inappropriate. Uh, he didn't say anything inappropriate to the daughters of Shu'aib when he helped them. 
he helped and he walked away and made dua. Then the father decides, I would like to marry you to one of my two daughters. He understood the hint. This is a trustworthy man. This is a characteristic that is rare. And he is also very strong. So he would be a very uh, righteous and very good husband. So he asks him to marry uh, basically uh, his daughter, some scholars say again, the oldest daughter. And Musa السلام, agrees, and the, in exchange, he would work for Shu'ib for eight years uh, as a shepherd. And if he wanted to add to it another two years from him, he would. And it was said that Musa السلام, did that. Now, the story here about this marriage is very interesting. The story goes back to the moment in which he made dua as well. فقال ربي, إني لما أنزلت إلي من خير فقير. I am in need of anything good you bestow upon me. And immediately we find on the same day that he left Egypt with absolutely nothing at all. Nothing at all. Musa السلام, gets married and he gets a job and he has safety and security. Musa السلام, gets all of that in one day. SubhanAllah. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but don't violate your principles. Don't violate the characteristics that are good. Musa السلام, remained trustworthy, remained ameen and he was also strong. Seek out that strength that you need. And keep making dua and do not give in to anything else. Keep your standards high. The daughter of Shu'aib she's unnamed in the Quran. She's the daughter of Shu'aib. She walked with modesty. And modesty, loose translation of the word haya. It's very interesting that today when people talk about modesty, the first thought that most Muslims might have is modesty is about women, Muslim women, and it's about hijab, right? The covering of the body in an appropriate way. That's usually what people think about with haya as a first reaction. Haya is much more extensive than that. That is one part of it, and it's a very crucial part. But it's much more than just your appearance. The Prophet ﷺ said, Be modest before Allah, istahyu min Allah, haqq al haya, with their, their right that is required. What is that referring to? The Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, we are people of modesty. The Prophet ﷺ clarified, and I'm paraphrasing the hadith, for you to have modesty before Allah, is for you to be conscious and cautious of what you allow your mind to consume, what you take in, and for you to be conscious and mindful of what you enter into your stomach, what you eat. So eat light, eat pure, eat what is halal, and eat so that you are not wasting your energy. Eat what is good. And also, it is for you to be detached from a dunya to reflect on death often. So you're reflecting on death, it's a part of haya, it's part of real modesty because then you'll prepare for it. You're preparing for your meeting with Allah. You're likely to change your behavior, your appearance, your speech. It's not just about your clothes. It's about the internal state as well. When you detach from this world and you attach your heart to the akhirah, you'll have a more complete hayat. This is the hayat that the Prophet ﷺ is telling us to have. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this daughter of Shu'aib. She's unnamed in the Quran. Her legacy is still being recited to this day. And you know one thing about her, that she had modesty. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described her with modesty, she may have many other traits we don't know of that are good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us modesty in a time and place in which modesty is disappearing in society, in which people are becoming very shameless in their actions, in which people are losing their morality left and right. Even Muslims are being influenced by what's happening outside of the Muslim circles. Even Muslims can be impacted and change the way that they dress, change the hijab that they have or remove it altogether. They may change their speech. They may change their interaction with the opposite gender. Why? Because people who lose that with their secular or liberal values will look at Muslims and say, that's weird. You're different. Why are you doing that? Why are you restrictive? Why are you doing this and that? Why do you have boundaries? Haya is a trait and a branch of Islam. And in fact, it is one of the defining branches of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the complete and extensive uh, concept and notion and implementation of Haya for all of us, for all men and women. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to die upon it as well. Allahumma ameen.